Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Praise God. Let's just pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you. We are so blessed to be in fellowship with you, Lord. And you have opened our ears to hear you. Open our eyes to see you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus said you will guide us into all truth, and that is exactly what we expect today. And we will see it in the richness of your leading. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now, yesterday we began to look at forgiveness. We, we are dealing with lessons from the Bible. And, and so we, uh, this week we are looking at forgiveness. Why is it important? Why did Jesus teach on forgiveness why did he do so and i said something yesterday i said it matters how you see people will always try to hurt you that's not an issue so when you come and say can you imagine what this person did to me okay what did he do to you that that's not the story that's not the news the news is i'm now listening to you so what did you do <laughs> you see so because no, because because you see Generally, I know it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long, it's a quote, I mean, for, it's been in, around for a long time. That life is not about what happens to you. It's about what you do with what happens to you. So you must learn to take responsibility, first of all, for your life. There is no man. You know, when we stand before the Lord, now, when I say stand before the Lord, we're not even talk, I'm not even talking about going to heaven yet. Because today we stand before the Lord. See, what do I mean by stand before the Lord? When the Lord questions you about what you're doing or what you have done or what you're supposed to do, what answer are you going to give him? You know, because sometimes you, you find, I've met people like that. They are stuck in their lives in one spot for 10 years, for 20 years. Hey, why haven't you made progress in your life? Is it not a... Uh, um, so so person that lied against me in my place of work. I used to be the manager of, uh, you know, they call it a big company that was for yesteryears. You know? I used to be the manager of that company. In the whole area, there was nobody that was as smart. Do you, know, you know I graduated with first class? I was the best. I got that job on merit. But you see, they lied against me and, and they threw me out of work. And, and since then, You've not been able to get a job. Nah. They are, so, so you look at your life. You're suffering. You've not moved forward in life. And then you blame it on that fellow that lied against you. And you're holding all your life. Come on. It's not that fellow. When you stand before the Lord and you see him in all his glory and all his power, you will not be able to say, it was that fellow that made you not to move forward. You won't. Because, you see, when you stand before the Lord, you will see that there was so much grace available for you to have moved forward long ago. In fact, the moment they offended you, you should have moved forward. <laughs> Praise God. So, so we look at the, 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 the story in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 21 and 22. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him up to seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say, up to, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Wow. <laughs> 70 times seven. I want us to look at Joseph, book of Genesis, chapter 45. Now, go there quickly with me. I want you to see something here. Now, you know the story of Joseph. What an inspiring story. But, you know, if you don't carefully look at things, you are not going to learn a lot. You just see a, a, a suffered beginning and a... And, uh, a, a good ending. Praise God. But let's look at something here. Genesis chapter 45. Now, you know Joseph, he was, he, they wanted to kill him and then he, 
he he somehow he got delivered from the pit and then they sold him over got into egypt lived in potiphar's house you know i used to say this it's like if imagine if you're the nigerian pastor of joseph you see you and he comes to you and he begins to narrate all his life story he begins to tell you how you know what amongst all my my father's children i was the one he loved the most so much so that he made me a coat of many colors just something different from everybody but you know what happened my brothers now hated me and then they want the one time they planned to kill me they said no someone said no they shouldn't kill me they should throw me inside the pit so they threw me inside the pit i would have died in that pit but somehow they sold me into slavery so i got into slavery potiphar bought me and then i was living in potiphar's house listen when i was in potiphar's house things began to look good for me. And I got to the point where my master trusted me with everything. And he had told me that he, was, he had plans for me. So I was really working seriously. And I was doing my work honestly. And then suddenly, the wife showed up and wanted to have sex with me. But I refused, thinking I was, I was doing the right thing. But you know what she did? She lied against me. Other servants conspired against me. Even the master didn't understand. He threw me into prison. Now I've been in prison. I don't know what to do. So, so if you're a pastor, you met Joseph in prison. And he tells you all his life story. Which demon are you going to start binding? Which deliverance are you going to start giving? Is it near success syndrome? You know, like they say, you know. Joseph's story. See, we, we, is it, you, 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 it doesn't matter what happens to you. But I want us to look at how Joseph saw everything that happened to him how he saw it now look at verse 45 chapter 45 from verse 4 and joseph said to his brothers follow this carefully now please come near to me so they came near then he said to them i am joseph your brother whom you sold into egypt but now, oh, look at this carefully. But now, he says, I'm the one you sold into Egypt. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. What a thing to say. <laughs> he is not telling his own congregation. He is telling the people that sold him. Hey, I'm Joseph. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Before he starts, mm -hmm. do not be grieved or angry with yourselves that you sold me to Egypt, praise God. For God sent me before you to preserve life. Look at, for these, for these two years, the famine has been in the land and there is still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Look at So now it was not you. Ah, 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 ah. Follow this now. This is Joseph talking to his, you know, the people who were against him. He says, so now... It was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Have you ever wondered, I want you to think, Joseph was sold as a slave, right? Now, he, he did so well in Potiphar's house till the point that Potiphar handed everything into his hands. Now, at that point, have you ever thought about it? Why didn't Joseph plot his escape to his country? No, no, he could have just told Potiphar, Hey, sir, there's a land I had about that you see because before Potiphar made him in charge of his house I don't think it was because of his face 
I believe there must have been certain kind of interaction in Potiphar's house that must have made Potiphar to trust Joseph, trust, trust his managerial skills, trust his wisdom. See, So when Potiphar said, you know what, everything from now on is in your hands. At that stage, Joseph could have told Potiphar one day, sir, there's a land that I heard is going to flourish very soon. Please, I need three days journey to go and check out that land, check it out very well, and then I'll come back to tell you if you should invest there or not. Think about it. You think Potiphar would have said no? Come on now. So how come Joseph stayed? Secondly, I want you to remember something also. When, when Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt, have you ever wondered, see, because when he became prime minister of Egypt, there was seven years of plenty. Now, we don't know if that seven years of plenty began the day he was made a prime minister. But we know that there were seven years of plenty. So for seven years, Joseph was prime minister who had liberty. He was no more termed a slave. He was, so at this point, he could have actually gone with an entourage to see his father. He could have told Pharaoh, Pharaoh, sir, you know, I have a father. And he, he think Pharaoh, he think Joseph didn't know his land. Come on now. <laughs> Praise God. He think he didn't know? You, you think he, he, ah, oh, come on. But why didn't he go? Now, there is something about Joseph that you need to understand. Joseph is someone who had grown to trust in the Lord in everything. He had learned how to trust God for every step, for every move. Not because he hated his father. His father did him no evil. In fact, you know, if it's you, you would like to prove to your brother, because you know your father is longing to see you. You would like to prove to your brothers that, hey, 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 especially when he became prime minister. I mean, you, you would just want to arrive home with a convoy. You know, just, just carts and, and, and camels and, and horses and an army. <laughs> he just want to show up one day in your father's house. But listen, Joseph learned to trust in the Lord. So I'm sure several times he had thought of it like, Lord, my father, my parents. And then the Lord would have told him, relax, stay. I'm telling you the truth. Say, how do you know that? By the Spirit of God. The Lord told Joseph, don't go yet. Stay. He said, because the Lord had shown him the future. And that future is not going to come to pass by the working of his hands. That future will only come to pass by him trusting the Lord daily, following the obedience of the Lord. You know, that's the thing. The Lord shows, that's why sometimes you wonder, are you, you know, we want to ask sometimes, I wish God to just show me how my future is going to be like. But you want to also ask, are you sure you're matured enough to handle that vision? That's why he doesn't give us details. You see, because the moment he gives you the details, you will, ah, I know it already, I know it. So I'm supposed to go to this, I'm supposed to go. Oh, they know, you know, maybe the Lord showed you a vision that you traveled abroad. And say, ah, so what am I doing here? Ah, I'm going to apply for, for, for visa immediately. And then you go apply for visa and you are turned down. Huh? You apply the second time you are turned down. You say, no, God showed me. It doesn't matter how much I spend. You apply and apply until you become a, a serial. <laughs> you know what I mean? To the, I, the, the risk in that is when the real season comes for you to go and fulfill that thing, the failures you've had may have been too much and they can weigh you down. Because now God is saying, apply, saying, hmm, God, that place, they know me. For when I reach the gate, they say, oh God, you have come again. <laughs> I don't think I want to face that shame. I don't want to go. Not because God failed you. Because you were not ready. Or you, you couldn't wait for the right time to walk with the Lord. Praise God. 
We're still talking about forgiveness. Praise <laughs> God. So, so I'll see you tomorrow because our time is up for today already. Listen, stay with this and, and you will learn a lot that's going to bless you. Praise God. Bye-bye. <laughs>